Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Implementing a Service Desk Magic Button, featuring InContact, BMC Remedy Force, and X Matters. But first, a little housekeeping. The recording of today's webinar will be sent out to all attendees. Today all phone lines, except for the speakers, will be muted. We would love your questions, so please submit them in the chat window, and we will do a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce you to today's speakers. Chad Hafterson is the Director of Product Management for the Remedy Force offering at BMC. Prior to BMC, Mr. Hafterson led product management and product marketing at Enitus a leading provider of on-demand project portfolio management for IT. His background also includes product management, marketing, alliance management, and professional services at Mercury, HP, and a variety of other software providers. Ken Wood is the Senior Manager of Enterprise Management Tools at InContact. He has been at InContact for about three years and provides strategic direction and oversight, oversight on solutions for managing and monitoring InContact software, infrastructure, and third-party applications. Ken has, has more than 25 years of experience in IT in various capacities such as customer, customer support, programming, Unix systems administration, monitoring, and event management. The last 15 years has included experience with products for discovery, service management, operations management, and capacity planning. Tom Kasari is the Lead Solutions Architect at X Matters, where he has been helping customers improve communication and collaboration for the past two and a half years. Prior to X Matters, Tom was a subject matter expert in application release automation and process automation for the pre-sales team at CA Technologies. Tom's background also includes development and product management in the fields of automation, ITSM, and monitoring at companies such as CA Technologies, Fluke Networks, and Visual Networks. I will now turn it over to Chad. Please take it away. Thanks, Toby. Um, and good morning everyone. Thanks for joining this morning. Um, I want to spend the next couple of minutes talking about the market landscape that we see around service management that enables the solution that you're going to hear about from InContact and Ken um, that encompasses the Remedy Force and X Matters solutions. So one of the big things we see in IT, and I don't think this is going to be news to anyone, is the role continues, continually changes. When, when I first started in this industry, it was all about managing infrastructure and PCs and making sure you know, things got on the network and everything like that. Now, um, and now is probably a, a term that's several years old for most people. We're talking about bring your own device and being able to support all of the various handheld devices that, that uh, your employees have and enabling them to work with those devices. We have cloud-based applications which dramatically change your landscape as far as how you, how you manage change management, asset management around your, your cloud-based uh, applications as well as your on-premise applications. Many times those are talking together. You have, uh, you have scenarios where you have multiple applications combined together for a, for a single solution where you have integrated parts com uh, creating complexity between how your different applications interoperate with each other and potentially different, you know, different applications running some in the cloud, some on premise, etc. So IT is continually uh, being asked to change with more on the horizon coming in cognitive learning or, or artificial intelligence and machine learning. You have augmented reality coming as well. So there's always a changing landscape that that IT has to work through with their customers to improve customer service and support the business. That leads to a lot of disconnected processes and fatigue for the IT organization. So um, a lot of times we see customers who uh, do a great job standing up their service desk, but not necessarily as great a job tying together all of the various people that may be needed to solve a particular problem, or they've got such rigid processes in place that it makes it difficult for, uh, for people to actually 
work outside the box a little bit to, to creatively solve problems. What we're going to talk about today is how to really improve on that, um, on that process control and routing and automation to reduce some of that fatigue that you see within the organizations. And of course, collaboration is a big key as well. As, as organizations become more distributed, as you have employees working remotely more often, I know in our organization a lot of people work from home, um, you need to be able to reach out and co co uh, coordinate with the right people at the right times to solve problems. Just because people aren't always in the office doesn't mean you have longer SLAs to accomplish tasks. In most cases, they're actually shorter, and you need to be able to uh, you need to be able to quickly resolve uh, problems that come in from customers, especially when those are affecting uh, externally facing applications that may be driving uh, changes to your bottom line in, in either ability to, to generate and collect revenue or, or bill or, or things like that. So collaboration is, is definitely a key, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get further into the, um, into the presentation. Now, the, the first of the applications we're going to talk about today um, is the Remedy Force Service Management application. Remedy Force is a comprehensive service desk solution that includes uh, ITSM process coverage for all of the key process areas. We have customer facing uh, capabilities in service request or service catalog management along with service level agreements, knowledge management, and, and tasks. At the core ITSM level, we support configuration management for your assets and your, your CMDB all the way up through instant problem change uh, as well as release management. And then we, we support key capabilities of the Salesforce platform as well. Remedy Force is a 100% native Salesforce application built on the Salesforce uh, platform which allows us to leverage uh, reporting and dashboards uh, and, and other key capabilities of the platform like mobility tied in with the security trust and uh, extensibility of the platform that you see out there. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that ties in with the rest of the story in just a second. What we see with our Remedy Force customers is a need to move quickly and achieve fast ROI. We do this through offering uh, very out-of-the-box pre-built templates and tutorials as well as content around ITSM and IT process management so customers have a starting place where they can always uh, start from and move forward. And we also work very closely with partners to, to make sure that we have combined solutions that can go together uh, to, to help customers get up and running with combined solutions quickly. We try to minimize effort. So Remedy Force is all designed around configuration, not customization, um, social, mobile, and modern, so it's, it's easy to push out and work with the channels that your customers are interested in. Um, also cost effective. And then from a delivery standpoint, and this is really the key of where we're going to be talking about today, while, while Remedy Force is a comprehensive ITSM solution, there are always process areas that can be improved, like what we're going to hear about with X Matters today, um, that can improve the collaboration and communication of your team. And we have a very open, um, a very open environment for partners uh, within Remedy Force, both from App Exchange as well as other partners like X Matters or other BMC products that allow us to very easily extend the product and allow you to use best of breed solutions uh, combined with Remedy Force to um, build a complete picture around your service management and your service desk, which is, is somewhat uh, the, the title we talked about today was Service Desk Magic and how you're combining a couple solutions to get there. So as I was mentioning, it's very important with a solution around a service desk to have an open ecosystem of partners that provide additional capabilities to solve some of the other IT operations challenges you may have, as well as, as other key um, communication platforms like X Matters. I'm not going to go into each one of these partners, but one of the keys is making sure that it's, it's easy to use partner applications with Remedy Force. This, is, this isn't like the, the um, traditional on-premise software where integrations are hard and complex. We want things that are easy to plug together, and we'll hear more about that as we get into the presentation. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ken from InContact, and he's going to talk about the real-world solution they have in place. So uh, take it away, Ken. Thanks, Chad. So yes, I'm Ken Wood from InContact, and hello from Salt Lake City, which is where our corporate headquarters are located. Let me tell you a little bit about our company from a background standpoint. 
we are really a cloud center provider. Uh, if you're wondering what the difference is maybe between contact center and call center, call center is actually kind of the traditional voice only with a contact center that includes the text and email components of that as well as voice. Since we're globally, uh, have a global presence, that allows it very easy for our customers to ramp up and ramp down the number of agents that they have and wherever they are, whether they're actually in a central location or they're actually a distributor in their homes. And we are actually recognized within this space by a number of leading organizations such as Gardner, Frost, IDC, and DMG as a leader. A little bit about me, uh, a lot of this has been mentioned previously, but the team that I manage, uh, the tools team, we really are responsible for the monitoring and management of our infrastructure for the most part, a lot of which we do through commercial tools such as BMC and X Matters. And I've worked at some of the Fortune 100 companies and have been able to bring some of that more enterprise view capability to help address some of our processes and procedures. Ken, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, yep. Ken, I'm very sorry to interrupt. We're having a couple uh, chat questions about uh, volume. Is there any way to speak up just a little bit for them? Yeah, how about that? Oh, perfect. Thank you. You bet. Sorry about that. We actually have, I think, the largest number of remote employees of any company I've ever been associated with. It's a pretty amazing percentage, and we're distributed across numerous continents. Uh, our, our products really fall within pretty much three different buckets, uh, voice, workforce management, and workforce optimization. And late last year, we were actually acquired by a, a company called NICE, so we can now say we are a NICE company. So now to get to our story. When I first got here, I think we did actually a, I'm going to say, decent job of actually identifying issues. So we could do that maybe within a, just a few minutes of something occurring. The problem, though, was then what do we do? So the status at that point in time was, well, we'll email this distribution list. And so everyone on the distribution list will know about this situation. Well, there's a few issues with that, as you might imagine, one of which is, so which person on the distribution list is going to take responsibility for this? How can we tell when this thing is resolved? And, of course, not to mention now everybody's got tons of spam. In fact, I found it kind of interesting when I was first interviewing and I was talking with the manager of the NOC, and he said, we get way too much email. And I said, I can help you with that. And anyway, after a short period of time, uh, we made some changes, and I said, okay, Starting at this point, you will no longer be getting emails for these things. And they said, well, how are we going to know? Well, this will be on the screen. The NOC is manned 7 by 24, so that shouldn't be an issue. And you can see, and you can see the current status. You can see if somebody acknowledges it, and then you'll be able to tell because it will automatically disappear and clear if the condition no longer exists. But there's still the issue, what happens if they're not the group to resolve things, and then trying to get a hold of who's the right people to address that. Well, we have a number of different groups, as I'm sure most of you do. There could be the database group, or the systems group, or the network group, or the voice group, or however many other different infrastructure groups there may be. So while we did a really good job of identifying a problem exists, and now we're making the operations center responsible to try to do this initial triage to say, okay, what group does this fall in, our notification it really left some to be desired because, okay, they could say, great, we, we identify, we believe this to be a database issue, for example. So unfortunately, at that point in time, all of our groups didn't even use a consistent method to maintain their own call list. So maybe they had a spreadsheet, maybe it was in SharePoint, maybe it was on a website, whatever the case may be. And then for Operations Center, they would have to know, let's see, this is the database group, so for them, we need to go, and in this particular case, they actually had their own application they were using. We have to go to this to be able to maintain this, and hopefully this is up to date. Okay, we've got it. We've looked it up. Who's the first person? Let's call them. And so they would do that. Well, maybe that would ring, and it would ring, and they didn't get an answer. So they would wait a few minutes, and maybe they would try again. Uh, there's still no answer. Well, as it turns out now, another problem has occurred. So now they've kind of got their attention diverted to that because that's the new hottest thing. They start engaging some other group. Uh, they can't get a hold of them, but they leave a message. 
they come back and they say, okay, let's see, let's go to the next person down the, the list here. If the first person didn't respond, we'll go to the next person. Okay, they contact them. They do answer, but then come to find out, they say, oh, no, this isn't a database issue. This is actually a system issue. Oh, okay, we need to get a hold of somebody from the system side. Now, where's their on-call list maintained? Anyway, without uh, belaboring that point, you can understand that could potentially take quite a period of time. So wouldn't it be nice if we could actually automatically do that? If we could identify, great, this is the group, and then let's just have the notification occur. So there's the opportunity. And so we implemented X Matters. That was basically our resolution to that. Um, and the net effect of that is, and so here's a real life scenario for you. On August 20th, which happened to be a Sunday, we had an event occur. Uh, Operations Center became aware of it. They assigned this out. Uh, notification automatically is occurring now because that's the way we have it set up within X Matters. So any P1 or P2 with the Remedy Force incident is automatically doing the notification to their group, and it's going through the on calls. It's already been defined within X Matters that those groups maintain. And of course, again, now if the first person doesn't respond, it will go to the next person, so on and so forth. And whatever methods they've identified, they maybe start with email, then maybe it will go to uh, the application itself, then maybe it will go to a text message, then maybe it will actually do a phone call. Uh, and there may be a period of time between each of those. But even however long that period of time may be, there's also a time between the first person and the next person but before that uh, continues on down the on-call list. And that will continue until somebody will actually acknowledge that and accept that. So anyway, on August 20th when we had this particular event, this occurred, and as it turns out, the first person, of course, I guess not expecting something. It was a Sunday. Generally things are pretty quiet. Uh, they had apparently left their phone at home and gone on a walk, whatever the case may be. So we went through that period of time, however long that may have been, maybe five minutes or something, uh, through the different methods of notification for it, escalated to the next person. And then it went, for whatever reason, through a few more people. But the net effect was uh, notification automatically occurred. A person became aware of that issue and then was able to actually address it. And the total resolution time for that particular event was 34 minutes which we roughly equate to potentially about the same time previously we were using just to try to get a hold of the right person. So this has really been quite a time saver for us. And while we talked about different methods available for notification, X Matters and I would as well recommend that the preferred method actually be the mobile app. And there's a few reasons for this. And these are actually screenshots from iPhone. Number one, it's free. So you can send an unlimited number, however many you want, of notifications to the app, and there's no charge. If you do text messages or you do voice calls, uh, you have a limit, and then after that limit, then there's, there's a charge. So you don't have to worry how many of these are resending. That's fine. One of the other things is you can do customizations on this. So an example that you see here is when we send something out, especially in this on-call rotation that we're talking about, <laughs> It gives people an opportunity to respond. And you can see the two options there. If they say unavailable, that's great. And if this is the first method that we're trying, that means it will not try any more devices for that particular person. So whether they have email, call, text, whatever else they've got, once they say I'm unavailable, which may mean I'm in a place where I, I can't do something about this, it will immediately bypass that person and go on to the next one and kind of accelerate that on call. If they do choose to accept that, We've provided them a few different options. Uh, they can just respond, or they can actually add a comment as well. Either one of those will automatically place the ticket in Remedy Force and assign it to them because they've responded and they've accepted that. And if they put a comment in, that will actually add whatever their comment is into the incident as well. So we really like this two-way integration because this helps speed up our resolution as well and helps to show that the status of the incident has changed. So it's not just an open incident anymore. It's automatically assigned, and they didn't even have to log in to Remedy Force. They just simply click on their phone, yep, I've got it. And it will also terminate the notification for the on-call, because now we've reached somebody that said, I'll take responsibility for it. So from an 
remedy force perspective, it really wasn't that long ago, about a year and a half ago, that we made the decision to actually migrate to remedy force. So we have Salesforce. We use that externally with our customers. And one of the things with Salesforce though is everything is a case. So we really wanted a finer level of uh, definition, more ITIL-like, to say we really want to be able to see just incidents, or we want to be able to see changes, and we want these to be separate, uh, and we want to be able to do different uh, maybe tracking on that on resolution. And we want to be able to see problems as well and have those be designated as something different and service requests and so on. One of the other big things for us that kind of drove us in this direction is the capability of a CMDB. So we actually own BMC Discovery and that's a way to take this information that we automatically discover and populate it into the CMDB and then actually associate that to problems, changes, and incidents via CIs which we believe it significantly enhances reporting and capabilities to determine what's really going on in your environment. One of the other really nice things about this is it's really fairly minimal impact to our users. So while people were used to using Salesforce, they go to the same URL, same login, nothing changes. This is simply a different app available to them. They simply make a different selection and they see these screens and have some different tabs. But the look and feel is very similar as well. So the learning curve is very minimal in migrating from Salesforce to RemedyForce. So here are some of the use cases that we've implemented with XMatters. So the first one that I've talked about was this automation of P1, P2 incidents to notification. So we originally started really with a one-way integration. We recognize this need that this manual notification can take too long. And our operations staff can be very busy, and you know, they may even make a mistake on who's the right group to assign this to, whatever the case may be. Uh, but for them to be able to, especially when we think of people having different methods of notification, and potentially, again, maintained in different places, for them to be able to know all that and stay on top of that, uh, regardless of how many other things are going on, that's really not a good avenue of success. So now, because this thing is automated, regardless of the number of incidents that may occur, even if they occur simultaneously, once that incident gets assigned, the notification is automatically occurring in the background. The second scenario was we recognize there are certain things that seem to occur on a more regular basis. This may be that we have um, a voice issue, or maybe we have a platform issue, or whatever the case may be. And, and many times what we find though is we actually want multiple groups to be notified of this. So the neat thing is we can set up these templates, and the template can actually have in the background associated to that whichever the appropriate groups are. So all the person has to do, which generally would be our operation staff, is click on whatever the scenario is, or the template, and then put in the description of whatever they need to send out. Okay, we've got this type of an issue that's occurring. Here's what we want to put in for the text. Push the magic button, and the right people are notified. So this is not only a lot quicker, but also reduces the error if somebody said, oh, I forgot to include this group. I didn't realize I only had these two groups. I didn't have the third group. Our third use case, which may be very simple, but is actually quite useful as well, is the direct notification. So now we've identified, oh, we really need to get a hold of Kenwood or whoever the person may be. Let's call him. They don't have to do a lookup on what the phone number is. They can simply go in, which they do, to X Matters and say, great, Kenwood phone, here's what we want to send, push the button. Away it goes. Or whoever the person may be. Or they can pick a different method. Or they can say, you know what, we don't care. We don't care how they get notified. We just want to notify this person. And that's a way to do that. Again, they don't have to do the lookup, which is really nice. Another use case that we came with uh, is conference call notifications. So these are a little bit different than what we had with uh, the original thing with uh, on-call notification. In this particular case, we actually want to do a blast. So we want to say we want all the people to be notified at the same time. On the on-call thing, we'll give people, we'll go to the first person, and then we'll wait. We'll give them different methods before we then go on to the next person. In this case, we actually want everybody to get it at the same time, however many people this may be, for them to join this bridge, and it will have the bridge number in there they can click on to connect. 
so that we can all talk about whatever the particular issue is. Again, a time saver. Uh, instead of having to call one person, okay, let's have you join the bridge, or let's connect you to the bridge, now we'll call another person. Uh, now it's a matter of all these people just responding to this thing that's on their phone. They can connect to this bridge. Another use case that we've got is executive informal communications. So now we've got a group predefined of executives to be notified in the event of an outage. We have a policy every hour they need to be notified of what the status of that is. Again, this significantly reduces the error rate and the time required for this by allowing the operations staff to simply select this group and put in whatever the text is and push the button, and off it goes. And we don't need to worry that, oh, yep, we forgot this person should have been included, or that we have to go through this manually, uh, all these people, again, getting notified at the same time. So I talked about we originally had set up as our goal this automated notification of P1 and P2, and that was done in a one-way fashion. And since then, we've gone to really a two-way integration that we kind of talked about with the mobile app. So now people can, from their phone, actually acknowledge it, and it comes back and automatically assigns a ticket to them and potentially updates the notification as well. So while we were really focused on this first use case, a lot of these other use cases came out as we started working with groups, and we recognized either other things that we were doing because our intent was we really don't want to support multiple products that do the same functionality. So if they had used another product and they were doing another use case with that, we wanted to be able to incorporate that so they could use one product. So here's some of the lessons that we've learned in the process of doing this, one of which is well, we were happy to onboard groups one at a time, which I actually think is a better process instead of just having a huge meeting with all the people and say, here's what we're doing, we're going live today. We said, let's bring some key group on so we're able to identify, here's the main groups on call that the operations group is notifying or that need to be notified of events. Uh, let's do those one at a time. Had a meeting with each of them and said, we will help onboard you. We will help do the initial setup. But what we want to do is we want to identify someone within your group, preferably probably one to two people, to manage the group for you. Obviously, people may change their phone number or they have a new method they want to use for notification. They've got a new email or now they want to get text instead of calls, whatever the case may be. They can maintain all of that. And what happens if somebody's going to be um, on vacation or they're sick? Then they, it's a very simple process, but they will know that, and then they can take them out of being in the rotation. Or they can change the rotation, whatever the case may be. Uh, certainly it would be chaotic, though, if everybody had access to do that. So we found one to two people per group seems to work out pretty well. And in reality, outside of the operations staff, these may be the only other people that actually log in to the X Matters portal. Uh, again, the other people pretty much are interfacing doing whatever they need to do via the app for the most part. Uh, the second piece I kind of talked about with the first one, which was really doing this on a group-by-group -group basis. So they can get the attention they need. We, we seem to have found that in a smaller group, people feel more comfortable, especially when it's with their own group, to talk about different use cases, questions they have. They may have some of the same questions as other groups, but that's okay. We want to give them some more individual attention and be able to address their needs. We found out that was better, too, for getting some of the use cases from them. What are some things that, besides what we're talking about, you would want to do with the product? A third thing we did to simplify it as well, so when we did this one-way integration, initially when we were starting and had a, a minimal set of people in there, we also had individual logins. We recognized that was not where we wanted to end up. So it was that second piece when we actually did the two-way integration, we also implemented an integration to LDAP. So now they use the same corporate ID and login. So they don't have to worry about, oh, here's this site. What do I do now? How do I log in here? It's the same one. One of the other things we recognized, though, and while this may be uncommon, it actually did happen to us one time, LDAP was not available. We definitely didn't want to get into a situation where, as a result of that, now people can't do notification. What would happen if the notification we wanted to do was that LDAP is not available? So that would not be good if we could not utilize X Matters because we couldn't log in. So we have to have a capability for people to be able to utilize it outside of LDAP, which does exist. 
So anyway, it's just important to be aware of that and communicate that, that kind of the emergency capability. One of the interesting things that came up in some of our discussions with a number of groups as we were onboarding them is, as we kind of talked about earlier, we're actually kind of a telephony company. So we have the capability to do some of this stuff in our own product. And people said, well, why don't we use our platform to do notifications? And I said, what happens if our platform is not available? Then what do we do? Oh, I see. That makes sense. So we really, I really like this idea of uh, kind of an out-of-band capability, uh, something outside. It's SaaS-based. We've actually never had issues with availability of XMatters. That's been very nice. Again, we know that if we completely lost capability to access our devices or LDAPs down or whatever the case may be, we still have the capability to access this and send out notifications because it's totally, completely external from, from us, even though we have connectivity into it. So I, I view that as quite a positive. And of course, since we're a SaaS-based company, SaaS solutions we actually view quite favorably. Another thing that I talked about uh, but I believe is really a, a very good practice is we had six different use cases as, as we are currently running this. But we didn't start out of the box and say, we're going to do all six of these things for everybody. We said, we're going to do this one use case. We are going to do automated notification of P1s and P2s. When we get that down and people are happy with that, then we will expand and go to the next one. Again, just like working with single groups, I think that's a very successful policy. I, I talked about the next one a little bit, that as we bring on these additional groups, there's a lot of commonality. There's some differences as well. And we start to hear different things that they would like to do. And it potentially makes sense, and that may be a potential expansion as well. And one of the last lessons I'll share with you in regards to this is standards are great. And my recommendation would be that you get buy-off on that from the executive sponsor because every group can want something different. And when I talked about, you know, this is how we're doing on call, and we're doing these rotations, uh, and then when we're doing these conference call notifications, it's actually a blast. So that's difficult to say, well, blast when we're doing, we're saying we're going to include three groups and we're going to blast everybody, um, but this group wants it different, and they don't want to be blasted this way, and they want to delay, and they want whatever, uh, that we can say, here's how we're going to standardize, this is what we're going to do. Uh, you may even want to do that on the method of notification or delays or whatever the case may be. But if the executive sponsor says, you know, this is what makes sense and this is what we want to do for our business, that, that makes it a lot easier to implement that. So where do we go from here? Well, we're not done by any stretch of the imagination, but we are getting good value out of it. So interestingly enough, while our customers are all internal, uh, because of, I believe, our success with what we've done, we have another companion group uh, that is more customer-oriented, external customers. They have actually signed on with X Matters. Their integration will actually be with Salesforce because that's where, what our customers use. But that is a mechanism they plan to use as well to notify in, in event of outages. So what happens if Salesforce is not available? Or what happens if whatever the case may be? This is a method they can use to do external communication. So that's in the works. Uh, they're, they've got a plan to roll that out shortly. Yeah. One additional thing we plan to do is what we call escalation notification. So this isn't from an on-call perspective, from one person to the next. This is actually from one group to the next group. So we may still have, and I think this is probably how we're going to do this, the incident still assigned to the same group. So let's say maybe it's a network operations group. Well, we have an SLA or an OLA that we're trying to meet. So let's say in the case of the OLA, maybe it's an internal issue. We may say, great, uh, it's a P1. We've got four hours we want to resolve this. So after half of that time is over, or two hours, if they cannot resolve that, then we want to invoke the next group. So we would go to network engineering. So this is what we're, we're planning. We're kind of putting together some of the details with this. We've, we've kind of talked with some of these different groups that we have. They're very supportive of this. And maybe most importantly, our executive sponsor really wants to see this done. So this is a, a thing we're, we're planning to implement. So af after half that time, then we would escalate the notification to the next group. 
and potentially after half of that time, so now two hours have gone by, network engineering got notified, another hour has gone by because that's half of what's left of the four hours. We would then do the escalation to the next group, and then potentially half hour after that, because then that's half the time that would be remaining, we then escalate to the next group, which would actually be management. So then now, as we start to get to the executive management, then they can realize we've got this issue and we potentially are going to be in violation of OLA. What do we do? We know now that this has already gone through these other groups, and hopefully it never gets to that point. But we want to be able to have that capability to do that. We have found, though, that uh, since we've actually set up some OLA reporting and notifications in Remedy Force that our compliance is significantly improved. And so this is kind of the OLA notification component to that, if you will, or automated notification. And one of the other things we find as well is uh, that there are a lot more additional groups internally that have interest in both X Matters and Remedy Force. And that's part of our plan is to continue to incorporate them. So our initial focus was actually operations. Uh, again, we talked about the initial use case was our P1s and P2s, and we wanted the uh, ability to do automated notification there. Since then, though, obviously we've got additional groups within the company. We've got our corporate group. We've got um, some R&D folks and a bunch of other groups that really it makes sense to bring them on board, and actually it helps both of us if that happens. That may seem a little strange, but this particularly comes into play with service requests. So instead of having multiple methods for people to communicate with us, say, oh, we'll use this for this group and we'll use some other method, Salesforce, or whatever the case may be for other groups, we really prefer to do that in one solution. We want people to be able to use just one product for everything. So when another group says, well, we want this, but we don't use Salesforce, that's fine. We can set you up in Remedy Force. So that's been a really nice thing for us that, that they don't have to necessarily be a Salesforce user, so to speak. They can be just a Remedy Force user or a platform user, and then they can do service requests. So anyway, as we get them on board, that helps us out as well because we also do service requests. We want to request things from other groups, and we would prefer to use the same tools that we're providing to other people. So that, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tom from X Matters. Great. Thanks, Ken. That was a uh, fantastic success story to InContact. Uh, great advice for others who want to get on the same path to success. And I'm going to recap some of the things that Ken said. I won't do it justice in comparison to his great story, but um, at a high level, you know, again, InContact is using X Matters and Remedy Force together to automate the process of engaging technical resources, informing stakeholders with valuable updates, with an end result of greater visibility, greater accountability, reduced noise and fatigue, you know, those emails that fill up your inboxes every day and distract you from what you really should be focusing on. And most importantly, a huge reduction in the overall mean time to repair. And what we've heard from Ken this morning isn't unique to InContact. I hear similar challenges from pretty much every organization I talk to. So things like manual engagement of technical resources, using spreadsheets, SharePoint sites, or even worse, tribal knowledge to figure out who to contact. Um, that usually leads to long outages, people being flooded with emails about systems that they don't care about, and executives and other stakeholders that are left in the dark during a major incident. And most organizations know they can't continue to operate this way, especially in today's world where customers are expecting the highest levels of quality, performance, user experience, while at the same time demanding better services, more features, more functionality, all at a faster pace. Now, whether you're talking about service management, operations, or DevOps, IT has been evolving to keep up with those expectations, to keep up with those demands by adopting more agile tools, more agile processes, and by working to align the various functions so they all work in a much more streamlined fashion. And the ability to bring those new tools in has never been easier with open source tools, freemium tools, low cost tools, SaaS based tools. It's very easy for anyone to jump in and get started with a new technology. Because of this, many teams use dozens of tools to develop, to build, deploy, monitor, manage their applications and services. And often, different teams are implementing different tools for the same end result. In fact, that's part of what DevOps promotes, the ability for 
each of these teams to choose whatever tool set makes the most sense for them, and that works fine at a team level. But as we get to the bigger picture across the organization, the interesting part is this breaks down. While each team has their own tools, automated, possibly integrated, once you look across the teams, the handoffs typically aren't going to be well-defined. They're not going to be integrated, and the automation begins to break down. So this is where you, again, need manual steps added back to your process, and that's going to kill that agility. Now you're back to your old legacy IT organization where people and manual processes are required as the glue between all of these different systems. Coordinating and integrating this technology is one thing, but once you add in all of the audiences, the diverse audiences that need to be engaged or informed, especially during a major business disruption, that automation goes out the window. Processes break down, next steps aren't always defined, and you have to depend on the heroics of a few key people to hopefully save the day. And I'll give you an example. I was recently talking to a large healthcare insurance company in the southeast. Uh, they've spent years implementing modern tools for development, for monitoring, for ITSM, chat ops, and everything in between. But when there's a major incident, it all goes back to people executing manual processes. First, they have to figure out which of the technical teams need to be engaged, just like Ken was mentioning before. And this is mostly tribal knowledge. Sometimes it's in a spreadsheet. Sometimes it's in a manual runbook. Then they have to figure out who's on call. Again, back to spreadsheets, SharePoint sites, other things like that. They blast emails out to everyone, but know that most folks aren't going to be able to respond to those quickly. They're not going to get people's attention because, again, their emails are flooded with all kinds of unimportant things. So they manually start calling people. Again, exactly the same story that Ken was talking about before. So one by one, calling people, manually escalating to backups if the primary doesn't respond. It takes forever just to gather the team that's required to triage the issue. And for real-time information sharing, they create a channel in Slack and ask everyone to join, which again takes time. Letting leadership and stakeholders know about the incident is also a challenge because oftentimes they don't know who cares. So either they have to send it to a select few people and hope that they haven't missed anyone who really needs to get this, or they blast it out to a much bigger list, knowing they're going to get a bunch of angry emails, uh, angry replies from people who don't care about the system and don't want more emails flooding their inbox. They also have to update their internal portal with the outage information in the hopes that people will see it and won't call up the help desk to open up more tickets. And after all of this is done, after service, service is restored, they have to gather and present data as part of a post-incident review. So where does that data live? Well, because there's no integration or automation, it's everywhere. There's some information in the incident ticket, which really should be the sole source of truth, but then there's information that's manually recorded when they started calling up the different technical teams. There's information in the Slack channel when the technical teams were sharing information. There's information in emails when they were sending out the stakeholder notifications, and more information in that internal portal where they put the outage information up. So as you can imagine, very challenging, not just during the execution of the major incident, but even after the fact when they need to bring all of this information together so they can improve going forward. Now, when you have disjointed tools and manual processes, the consequences are felt not just with IT, but across the entire enterprise. Automation stalls while tasks and processes become redundant. Control and influx of tools within each team means too many single points of contact. And most importantly, the types of benefits that you get within each team can't, enterprise, uh, can't scale across the enterprise. And this is where X Matters comes in. Again, whether you're talking about service management, operations, or DevOps, X Matters brings together your people, your processes, and your technology. We do this by integrating with the tools across the various teams, by automating the engagement of technical teams, by automating the informational updates to stakeholders as well as the related data flows to other systems like the chat ops tools, like the dashboards, and all those different tools in between. And we do this by enabling response-driven orchestration. So X Matters automates communications so you can proactively prevent those outages, rapidly engage resolve resolvers when something happens, manage your major incidents, and keep your organization informed. 
So with that, I would like to invite you to try and see this in action for yourselves. So up on the screen right now, you'll see a couple of links where you can get trials of X Matters and Remedy Force and see how your organization can gain some of the same benefits that Ken and Chad and I have discussed today. And Toby, I'll pass it back to you for uh, questions. All right. Answers. Thank you so much, Tom. As a reminder, everyone, please use the chat feature in the lower left-hand corner of your screen to send any questions through that you might have. We have received a couple already. First question, can executive stakeholder groups specify different contact methods for different types of incidents? For example, can the CIO get a text message for a major incident and emails for less critical events? Or can our service desk specify a particular notification method for a blast? For example, email is down, notify executives and stakeholders via text message only. Ken, did you want to take a stab at that? Or if not, I can, I can take that one. I can, sure. So the answer would be yes. You can set that up that way. Again, you could use these template things. You can say if you want, uh, because you can actually specify this person and this type of device. That's the type of thing. So you could say, for example, uh, CEO email. This is what we're going to add. We're going to add this destination into this template, if you will, so that whenever this type of thing occurs, it will just send an email to the CEO, whoever the person may be. Or you could say uh, CEO uh, app, in which case that was what would be added to the template. And then whenever somebody selects that template, they will get notified directly to their app. Great. Thanks, Ken. And, and to add to that, um, the subscription capabilities in XMatters allows your folks, um, executives, stakeholders, others, to go in and select the different devices. So if there's a specific application, a specific service, a specific client that's having a lot of challenges, and that one is more urgent and needs uh, better visibility, you can go in and select those and say those should come through a phone call or a mobile app push where others would be just fine to come in via email. Thank you, guys. Next question, how long did it take to start using X Matters? So that is a good question. And actually, as it turns out, this is one of the things we really like about X Matters. Since it's SaaS-based, the stand-up is really quick. So from our standpoint, we just provide the requirements and the environment, as, as far as our time is concerned, is about zero because X Matters is standing that up. But then for the actual usage of that, as I kind of mentioned, it was kind of a phased approach. So it was really how long does it take us to define what we want to do with it, get the groups and people defined in there, get people trained, which actually is pretty simple, and then start to use it and start to understand the different use cases. But to really get up and operational on it was really quick. I was, you know, that's very nice. Thank you. Next question, how much were you able to, to do versus have X Matters professional service do? Services do, sorry. So we have basically done everything with the exception of the integrations, and we potentially could have done those as well. But so the initial one-way integration between Remedy Force and X Matters, we actually involved X Matters professional services for that to get that set up. And then the other two components we used them for was the LDAP integration, and then when we decided to actually go to a two-way thing, so we were actually getting data back from X Matters into Remedy Force, we used them for that too. Everything else we've done ourselves. And I actually I went to a X Matters webinar, attended one just recently. X Matters has significantly increased the number of integrations that they have available, and it looks like have made that quite a bit easier. So we've been able to set up, for example, an integration to select ourselves. We didn't have to involve professional services for that. Next question. Is Remedy Force just Remedy running on Salesforce? Um, that, that's a great question. We, um, we get that one a lot. So yeah, B, BMC of course has, has Remedy. That's one of our flagship products, a product that's been out in the market for a really long time. 
Uh, Remedy is, is definitely a different product from Remedy Force. When we built Remedy Force, because a lot of the same core components are available on the, save, on the Salesforce platform versus what was available on the, the AR system platform that Remedy was built on, we built Remedy Force from scratch on the Salesforce platform. So we leverage a lot of the same, um, we leverage a lot of, a lot of the core platform capability of the Salesforce platform to make it very tightly integrated with Remedy Force, make it so it can work with other applications that work with Salesforce, um, as well as Salesforce's applications like Service Cloud and others. Um, that has allowed us to provide much of the same functionality, but in a much more native, uh, native capability on the platform. Next question. We have people that don't quickly see or respond to important messages because they get lost in the piles of other messages. How can you help in this situation? So I can, I can take that one. You know what, it goes back to um, I think something that, that Ken presented earlier um, and Chad talked about with the concept of alert fatigue or notification fatigue. So email is used for all kinds of notifications, all kinds of messages, things that are critical and need to have a quick response and things that um, are not very critical, things that could sit there for days um, with no consequence. So it's usually going to be if you have one of those important messages you really need to get someone to take notice of, it's going to be having the different delivery channels. Um, as Ken mentioned, the X Matters mobile app can be a great way to do that. It's completely separate from email, completely separate even from other communication methods like you know, you're going to get phone calls or text messages for things that are not important, right? Um, but this is just those communications that are coming from your automated system, something that requires um, a response, something that has some accountability and responsibility presented to you. So it can be that, but of course there can also still be phone calls, SMSs, just other ways that are, you know, get people's attention more than uh, a, you know, a standard email would. I can add something to that too. Strangely enough, we had kind of a use case, even though one of our vice presidents said, I want to be notified when these things occur, uh, and then said, how come I'm not getting this? Well, we are sending it to your device. For whatever reason, he just wasn't as responsive. So we actually set him up to get it three consecutive times until he actually uh, would acknowledge it. So I mean, if he acknowledged it the first time, that would be fine. Uh, and then after that, he would say, oh, I, I got this. Yeah, this is good. This is really working well now. So anyway, there is that capability as well, just to make you aware. Next question, how do you manage the varying scheduling needs of many different resolver groups? So I can talk about that a little bit, which is, again, one of the things that we want to do after we onboard groups is we say, great, you know, we'll set you up, we'll do the initial uh, add of the users and their devices if you want, or you can do it yourself, but from that point we want to you know, identify somebody in your group to do that, and then you can maintain that. Uh, so they can actually control. Interestingly enough, we have some groups where maybe they have 10 people in their group, but they only want four people to be on call. Whatever their situation is, that's fine. That's something that they maintain. So if in the absence of corporate standards, whatever that case may be, then they can determine what are those delays between devices and between people. That can be set up within the group. Next question. You mentioned fast time to value as a benefit of Remedy Force. What does that mean, and how do partners help with that? Yeah, so um, I, I talked a little bit about it in the presentation itself. Uh, we, we designed the system in a way that you can, you can get it up and running with mostly configuration. One of the nice things about the Salesforce platform is it does allow you to go further than that with, with customization at the code level if you want to, but most of the configuration is designed in a way so you can do it through easy configuration. Then with our, with our partner ecosystem and a whole bunch of, of standard integrations out there like the one XMatters has built with, uh, with Remedy Force, it helps to get customers up and running quickly because we at least have starting points for those things um, to get you moving. Um, there's always, of course, with any integration, little tweaks that have to happen for individual customer use cases. But uh, having something standard to start with uh, helps you get started faster. Looks like we have one more question here. 
how does chat ops fit in as part of communication and collaboration? Ken, I don't know if you guys are are using chat ops, so if not, I can take that one, or if you have a We're not, an opinion, so feel go free ahead. to jump in. Sure, sure. I, I did mention it um, during my part here, especially with the, uh, the, the customer in the southeast that I recently talked to. So um, I see this pretty frequently. Most organizations are starting to use chat ops, maybe not enterprise-wide. You know, you, there's still other tools for kind of doing one-on-one -on -one communications, but specifically for resolver teams, you know, for incident teams, event teams, things like that. Modern chat ops tools um, like a Slack, like a HipChat, uh, Cisco Spark, there, there's a number of them out there. Um, and they definitely do have a place because that's a great place to share information. Once you're in the middle of incident resolution, you want to be able to easily do that. Uh, but again, the challenge, as I talked about in my example, is that it's just one more place where data exists and doesn't always come back together. And again, that's where X Matters can help by integrating to those chat ops solutions. So not only can we kick things off in those solutions, but we can also pull data back, consolidate it, so that when you're doing things like those post-incident reviews, again, the source of your data, the, the single source of truth, should be your incident, for example, in Remedy Force. So we can help pull that information back so it exists in one place as opposed to spread out spread out among the many tools. All right, guys. It does look like we have run out of time for today. We want to thank Chad, Ken, and Tom for joining us today. And thank you for every, everyone who joined the webinar. Just as a reminder that we will be sending out the recording in the next 24 hours. Have a great day, everyone.